Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program is in chapter five is calories from fat and carbohydrates. I'm just typing out this. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so the next program from chapter five is calories from fat and carbohydrates. Okay, so a nutritionist who, wor who works for a fitness club helps members by evaluating their diet. As part of her evaluation, she asked her members for the number of fat grams and carbohydrates grams that they consumed in a day. Then she calculates the number of calories that result from the fat using the following formula. Let me check to make sure it's correct. Okay, so calories from fat is equal to fat grams times nine. Yes, and then next she calculates the number of calories that ca that results from the carbohy carbohydrates using the following formula. Calories from carbs is equal to carb grams times four. Okay, so that's correct also. The nutritionist asks you to write a program that will make these calculations. Okay, so um, so basically, so we these are, we have the formulas to, to make to basically create um basically work with. We have the formulas to work with, right? So let's just read this and get a bit better understanding. So a nutritionist who works for a fitness club helps members by evaluating their diet. As part of her evaluation, she asks members for the, for the number of fat grams and um, and carbohydrate grams that they consume. Okay, so fat grams here, carbohydrate. Okay. All right, so based on the information that uh, members of a club get, uh, gives, gives uh, or give her, we can use this formula to basically calculate the calories from fat and the calories from caps. Okay, so she asked members for the number of fat grams and carbohydrate grams that that they consumed in a day. Uh, then she asked, she, then she calculates the number of calories that result from the fat using the following formula. Yeah, so basically we are calculating the number of calories from fat and we are calculating the number of calories from um, the caps. Um, based on information that was given to the uh, nutritionist, right? So we're going to write a program that's going to do that. So first we're going to write, since chapter 5 is all about functions, we're going to uh, write a function that's going to ca uh, calculate first the calories from fat using this formula. And then we're going to create another function that's going to calculate the calories from carbs based on this information. All right, so yes. So let's first see how we're going to um, construct this. Um, so she asked members. All right. So basically, let's let's go ahead and write functions for this. Let's go ahead and write um, create functions to basically solve these you know, this problem. A function that's going to calculate the calories from fat, and then a function that's going to calculate the calories from carbs. Right. All right. So let's first define the. Um, a function to calculate to calculate the calories from fat. So define, and I'm going to call this. So DEF to define the function. I'm going to call the uh, function calculate ca um, calories from fat. All right. Now let's see if it's going to need any, any arguments. Yes, actually, it's it's going to need an argument. So to cal to calculate the calories from fat, we would need the fat grams from the from the member. Right, so it says over here as part of evaluation, um, she asked members for the number of fat grams and carbohydrate, carbohydrate grams that they consumed in a day. Then she calculated. Okay, so basically, we would need the fat grams. So we have to go ahead and define as a as a parameter for this calculated calories from fat function. Um, fat grams. We have to define a variable fat that's going to accept the fat grams. So I'm going to go ahead and define a um, variable called fat grams. Okay, so once f the fat grams has been passed in into this function when it's called as an argument, in the function we're going to go ahead and to basically do this calculation. We're going to create a variable called calories from fat. Well, first of all, first let's focus on let's focus on the calculation, right? So calories from fat is equal to fat grams times. Well, the same thing, the same thing. So we're going to create a variable called calories. From fat is going to be equal to the fat grams that was passed to 
this function as an argument when it was called. So it's equal to this fat crumbs here times 9. Right. And once we are done calculating this, we want to go ahead and return it. So we're going to return what's stored in calories from fat. And then we're done. We are done with this function. Now let's go ahead and define a function that's going to calculate the calories from carbs. Right. So we're going to define df for define. We're going to call this function calculate calories um, from carbs. And calories from come from carbs is going to need I'll define a uh, basically yeah, ca yeah calculate calories from from carbs is going to need an argument so we have to go ahead and define a parameter and the parameter is going to be the carb grams the carb grams that you know the member is going to give the nutritionist so I'm going to define a parameter for carb grams or basically carbohydrates gr uh, grams you can just type in the whole thing or just say carb grams and then we're going to use this formula okay we're going to use this formula to calculate the calories from carbs so in the function I'm going to go ahead and create a form the formula which is calories from carbs is equal to the carb grams that was given to or was passed in as an argument to this function when it was called times 4 over here and then once we are done calculating the calories from carbs we want to go ahead and return what is stored in calories from carbs like this all right so now um let's see assuming that um so we, we can now test these functions um uh, to see uh what, what the results are going to be so assuming let's say a member of the club now we can write pro programs to ask the user to type in the to type in the um number of carbs and, and all the um, basically number of carb grams or basically the number of fat grams you can you, we can do that right we can do that but actually um, sh we, we should actually do that we should actually go ahead and do that let's go ahead and create an input function right U use an input function let's let's go ahead and ask the user to enter um, the fat grams right so enter fat grams and then once the user sees this, okay, this is going to allow the user to basically type in something, okay? Whatever is typed is going to be returned by the input function as a string. So even though the user is going to type in most likely a number, based on how the input function works, the input function is going to go ahead and return a string. Even if the user types in a number, it's going to return that number as a string. So we have to go ahead and convert that number. Sorry, convert that string, okay? Which which is which is a number, right? But it's just being returned as a string. By default, the input function always returns whatever the, the user types as a string. We need a number. We can't work with strings in, in calculation. We need to convert that that string that is being returned to a number so that we can use it in calculations, right? So to do that, we are going to well in this case, fat grams can be a double, like let's say fifty point eight grams, right? So it can be a float, a float or a double. I mean, a float. In this case, a float, right? So in this case, we want it f formatted to a float. Whatever the user has typed, we want it formatted to a float using the float function. So I'm calling the float function and surrounding everything that the user has typed with parentheses here. I'm converting everything the user has typed with, into a float. And once I have done that, I'll need the, you know, so basically, float. The float function is going to convert everything the user has typed to a float and return it. Okay, once it returns it, I need a place, a place to store it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called user fat grams this way. And I'm going to store whatever is being returned, okay, by the user here in, in user fat grams. I'm going to use the same method to store carb grams, right? User carb grams. And then enter carb grams. Or carbohydrates can, yeah. Carbohydrates um, grams. You can do that. So carb grams will be stored here, and then fat grams will be stored here. And then now we can go ahead and call the function call calculate calories from fat function. Calculate calculate or call that function, and then pass in the fat grams, the user fat grams that was typed by the user 
and then basically uh, call the uh, well basically when you think about it it's going to go ahead and return calculate calories from fat is going to go ahead and return the calories from fat so we need a variable to start right so I'm going to go ahead and create an, a variable called calories from fat and start it here it, do, it doesn't matter if calories from fat is the same as this. this this name is the same as this name this name the scope of this variable is just in this function it doesn't go anywhere else it's just in this function I'm creating uh, this you know this variable ac actually in outside 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 these two functions and and and, and to, to, to think of that I'm going to actually define a main method right a main method and the main method is not, it's not going to accept an argument for now but the main method is basically going to store our program where we are test we are testing our functions and everything else the main function the main function is basically the function that is that should run when the program starts okay that's where all of our program is, is going to go okay so I'm defining it now I'm not calling it yet we have we're going to call it later on but the main function is the function that is called anytime your program starts right it's supposed to be called anytime your program starts so I've defined it here so the reason why you can create a name which uh, you know the same as this is because this, you know this, these are two different variables as because they are in two different functions they don't see each other okay the scope of this variable is is just in this calculate calories from fat function and the scope of this variable is in the main function they don't see each other so you can call it the same name so I'm calling the calculate calories from fat function passing in the user fat grams that was typed and then it's going to return the calories from fat which is going to be stored in the calories from fat variable and I'm going to call the calculate calories from caps function and pass in the user carb grams that um, yeah the user carb grams basically the, the, fat, the carb grams that the user typed pass it into the calculate calories from caps function and we know that function is returning the calories from caps right so I'm going to go ahead and create another variable called calories from carbs and store the return value or basically the result in calories from carbs. Again, the name doesn't matter. These are two different scopes, two different variables because they're in two different functions. All right, so now we'll have the calories from fat stored here and calories from carbs stored here. All we have to do is just print it out now, right? So we can just create a print statement in main to print that, or we can even create a print function to just to just print out the details uh, we can just create a print details from um, that's only going to accept what you want to print it's going to accept the two things you want to print and then print it out but let's just go ahead and, and you know since we have these two functions that's fine so let's go ahead and create a, a print statement in main to just do that right so let's go ahead and create print and with a message and say um, you say calories from fat Okay, and then let's pass in the calories from fat var um, variable. And then let's go ahead and create, we can, cr we can create another print statement, or we can just use one print statement and then create a new line character here like this. Um, let's see. This will probably not be a, a, a good way to do it, but although it works, um, and we'll fix it later on, so no problem. So let's see. Calories from fat is going to be this. The good thing is we can actually format this value. So let's go ahead and format this value, because you know it could be numbers with um, so many so, so many decimal places. So let's go ahead and form format it, and then we'll fix the new line stuff later on. So this is the second argument. Let's go ahead and format it. And the format function takes two arguments. It takes in what you want to format and how you want it formatted. This is what I want want to format. How I want it formatted is going to be my next argument. It's going to go in double quotations. Now, because calories from fat is, is going to be a float, I want, it, I want this value formatted as a float. So I'm going to type in F, right? F standing, standing for float. That means that calories from fat is, is a float, and I'm, form I'm formatting it as a float. Now, I'm going to specify the position, meaning um, how many decimal places do you want to round this to? Now, I want to, I want to basically format it as you know, for, formatted with two decimal places. So I'm going to type in 0.2 in front of the F, and 0.2 is the position I type it in front of the F. If I wanted it formatted to uh, three decimal places, I'll say this, or 0.3. I want it formatted to, to two decimal places, so I'll say 0.2. 
and then that's it.